So we should go back and get something that you missed. I'm trying to remember what you missed. So that way we can pick that up. So, yeah. So I know we went, you were here for most of the service, chapter one. Ten Commandments, I think you were here for that. Yep. Okay. Both parts of the commandments? Yeah, probably. Yep, you were here for that. But in between, I, th I don't know. I think, how about the Apostles' Creed? God the Father, God the Son, and then God the Holy Spirit. Which part were you here for? You, did, you weren't here for everything. Okay. And then Lord's Prayer was two weeks ago. You missed that one? That one was the one I wasn't here for. Okay, all right. I'm going to turn the fan up. It's going to be a hot day for me. I was like, why do I have to wear black? I don't, but then <laughs> on like I have other colors, yes. I just don't wear them as frequently. Well, the thing is, you know, it's a uniform, and the reason you wear a uniform is that so people recognize you. All right. So um, I'm gonna pull up the catechism. Hopefully this all works as expected now. Uh, dun 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 dun. And of course it's not there yet. Oh, did it just show up? There it is. So this is new, we're still getting it configured. Okay, yeah, we bought it a while ago. We did a big fundraiser, but it required all sorts of stuff to get it working. We had to paint the wall, take the old stuff down, you understand. Right, when there was holes in the wall that were being covered by other things, so we patched that up. All right, Lord's Prayer. Yeah, I think they pulled it from the window, although it's not exactly the same. All right, so you can see that probably just fine. We can make it a little bigger. All right, so the Lord's Prayer from the Catechism. Um, talk about a few different things, maybe, than what I did the last time I went over it, but for your benefit. Um, I guess the first thing is to ask about prayer. What is prayer? And that uh, is worth rem remembering um, kind of a diagram that I do is we, if we have God, oh, that's not the right color. Well, that's fine. We can use that. And then here's you. That there's kind of two directions that things go. Um, and this is, pertains to you because you know you've requested a prayer. Right. Yeah. So we usually say this is faith and this is love, but it, it could be. If you do it this direction, then it's love, <laughs> right? So God loves us. Um, our response is that we believe in him, which he gives us as well because by his love. And then our, but then the way that we love God, uh, God doesn't need our sacrifices. He doesn't need, he did, like in the old time, he doesn't need us to sacrifice bulls and goats and spread blood everywhere. He actually instituted that to teach us about how he loves us. Not for, so that we would do something to make him happy with us. It, and even the, the psalmist even says, like, why would, why would I need the blood of bulls and goats? I made them. Like, why do you, you don't have to give them back to me, right? It doesn't make any sense, all right? And that's because even in the Old Testament, the people got confused and they thought, this is how we, uh, we make God happy with us because he's probably angry with us, right? So we have to make him happy. Uh, and prayer can be thought of that way. People think, like, if I say the prayers, then that's a demonstration um, you know, that, that I truly love him, and then he'll respond with love, as if it's some kind of um, transaction. Welcome, Allie. Oh, my gosh. It was awesome to see you again yesterday. It's fine. <laughs> Just about, but you're here. You get to, you get to experience the new funness. Yay! <laughs> okay, took this. Your reaction time. <laughs> your reaction time is slow. So what we were talking about, we're, we're talking about the Lord's Prayer. I don't know, did you, were you here for Lord's Prayer? Maybe. Doesn't matter. We can do prayer more than once. We're going to pick up where, a week that Dasha missed. All right. We're oh. up a week right now? We're Dasha missed, yeah. Oh, my gosh. Oh. <laughs> for Dasha's sake, you can help her. Because, and guess what? I never teach the same thing twice the same way. You may actually need to learn some more things about the prayer that you didn't get the last time. Yeah. All right. Thank you. I really want to know if you were like when you were in high school. 
And this is one of the reasons why we probably should do it twice because there'll be just as many distractions. Yeah, exactly. So, God loves us, right? But our response, we would say, is one of faith, but faith, of course, is given to us in his love as well by the Holy Spirit, which we've talked about when we talked about the creed, right? Um, so what does God need from us? And so I think we get confused about prayer. We think that he, um, like if we don't pray, he's not going to take care of us. That's an idea that people have. Like, if I don't ask, then he will never give it. Do I have a finger? Mm-hmm. There, there's pens, but I like my finger. I don't know. The pens are... How you did different... That wasn't intentional, but oh, you missed that. Okay, good. No, we're not going to just play with the gadget. There you go. There's some Maybe more. Maybe it's one of those classes that we can help you teach faster. So... Where is the Lord's Prayer? Uh, this is chapter 7. Okay. So that, that's one of the challenges that I think people have is they think of prayer this way, but they also think of worship this way. This is what we do to make God happy with us. Now, it, it should be said that God loves to hear our prayers. You know, just like you love it when your kids ask you for something instead of just taking it, right? <laughs> even, if they, even if it's theirs. But if they come to you and say, hey, can I go play outside? You're like, oh, that's great. Yeah, go ahead. Right? Even though they probably don't need to ask you. Right? They, they're free to do that. So, because it, it demonstrates this relationship, right? And, and it brings joy to us. Um, of course, it, it is also helpful to ask uh, if you're not sure that it is for you. Because then in the asking, you tend to try to seek out an answer, right? You want to hear a response. So, if you're not sure if, if something is for you, like God actually wants to give it to you, then the best thing to do is go to ask Him and then listen to His response, which is what the, God's Word is, is His response, right? is talking to us. Uh, so that's one idea. Same thing with worship. So people think, if I go to church, God will be happy with me. Well, certainly pastor will be. That's the first point. Um, but pastor isn't God. Um, God doesn't need your worship, but he, but he delights in it because it's a demonstration of the relationship that you have to him, right? Just like, you know, generally speaking, if one of your kids comes, if your kid comes to you and says, hey, mom, can you, um, I don't know, it's probably too old to read me a story, but, you know, used to be, right? Hey, can you read this to me? And you'd be like, oh, that's great. I'd love to, right? And that's our relationship to God as well. So he loves to hear, our, hear us, um, our prayers and our worship. Um, of course, praise, right? Who doesn't like praise? It doesn't go to God's head because he's not like us where we get proud and boastful, right? Um, and then uh, the offerings are interesting because offerings are the same way. Um, we think that if we give something back to God, then he's going to be happy. But there's the point, right? Does God need anything from us? No, but I have a question. Yeah. Is the offering like kind of sort of symbolistic to the shedding of the blood? Yeah, I, that's how a lot of people think about it. Um, I would suggest, at least from the New Testament, the shedding of blood was not the people's offering to God. The shedding of the blood was God's offering to the people. Right, so we have to remember that everything is God's. He made it, right? And so in a sense, he owns it. We like to think that things are ours and God, God gave it to us and then he doesn't care anymore. But that's not the way the Bible talks about it. You know, the stars and the planets are his, right? The earth, the wave, the seas, right? Even we are his. And we don't like that because it's like, well, it sounds like we're a slave. Well, I mean, you call him Lord, don't you? Well. Or master. <laughs> Right, but, but do you want to be a slave to sin, death, and devil, which only leads you know, to misery, suffering, heartache, pain, you know, hell, or be a slave to God, this is the way Paul talks, to be a slave to God who leads you to life and rejoicing and feasting and, and land free thing. No, you want to be bound to God, right? It's just we have this idea of slavery as being always negative. And it's like, well, not if you're actually, and, and we would say being bound to God again he, d he takes it another level. He says, I don't go just call you slaves. You're not just slaves, you're friends or your brothers right? or sisters, family. So, I mean, family is a kind of slavery, isn't it? Hmm. Okay, that's another conversation. But I mean, you're bound to these people. You don't have a choice about it. You don't get to pick who your mom and dad are. Oh, I thought you were talking about like... Maybe your kids are slaves? Yeah, I know what you're thinking. <laughs> like, yeah. Mm -hmm. 
So, so the question is why pray then, right? I mean, this is what we're getting after. Why bother? Because everything, you know, God is God and you are his creature, right? And um, prayer, as with worship and offerings, oh, I didn't answer your offering question fully. So the, the blood of the sacrifice is God's offering of his son to us in love, right? All the Old Testament sacrifices are a picture of Jesus giving himself for us. Even, even if, if in symbolic action we brought it to God, no, it's actually God giving it to us. This gets to be a problem um, in, in uh, the Roman Catholic tradition because when we talk about the Lord's Supper, they think that the Lord's Supper is not Jesus giving his body and blood to us for forgiveness, life, and salvation, which is what we believe, the Bible says. Um, they think it, it's that, but, it, but it's actually the priest and the, on behalf of the people is, are taking Jesus and offering him again as a sacrifice to the Father. So they, this is why in symbolic action, they'll bring the, the bread and the wine up to the altar. The people do. So that's their sacrifice. They're sacrificing Jesus. Then the priest takes it and offers it up to God the Father. That's why they'll face the altar and lift it up high. Our churches do that too, many of ours. Um, although we mean something completely different by it. This is the problem with symbol, right? It's like, well, which is it? Does it mean that you're taking Christ's body and blood and offering it up to God again as a sacrifice? Or is it, I'm just lifting it up so you can see it? <laughs> you know? Mm-hmm. Yeah, right. Yeah, exactly. But it, we, don't, we don't actually need that because the meaning or what it is, is comes in through the ear, not through the eyes. The eyes are deceiving as a matter. That's actually the way the Bible talks about it. The eyes are actually the portal to sin. Sin comes through the eyes, not through the ears. Mm. You haven't thought about it. Did I miss something? We were talking about offerings. So, you know about LWML? Lutheran Women's Missionary? You would say you do, yes. Right. So it's an auxiliary of not just our congregation, but our church body. For that, that's the women's organization that primarily um, is focused on mission work, both domestically and internationally. So they collect money, and this is called the mite box. So you put your pennies in there. And then they connect, collect enough of those that every two years they can grant, you know, millions of dollars. This year, I think it was close to $5 million. Oh, nice. Yeah. So if each lady, I don't know why they don't give you a box. They should give you a box. You don't have to go to the meetings, but. Um, our LWML now is responsible for uh, choosing the mission of the month as well. Oh, yeah. Right. Makes sense because they're, the, they're our missionary group. So why wouldn't they be the ones picking our missions? All right. Every month, a congregation has a mission that we support, and uh, there's the offering envelopes that everybody gets. There's an envelope every month for a mission, and we that mission is designated by the by the ladies actually now. So then the offerings here at church, mm -hmm. they all go to the LWM now? Nope, nope. That's a separate offering. Separate? Mm -hmm. Yeah, we take more than one offering. You can give lots of money, and you can give it in separate envelopes. Yeah. Uh, no, this is, this is an important topic because it's not really related to the Lord's Prayer, but it is in a sense of um, offerings are... Oh, I was going to get there, yeah. You want me to change colors again because you think I'm so special? Oh, yeah, it's good. Oh. I want to go pink. So, so this, is, this, is where, this is what we want to talk about, this direction, because that is where... Uh, here, I'll just keep changing colors because it's so obnoxious. So here, here is where prayer, prayer, maybe I do need the pen if I'm going to write smaller. Um, we'll just say wealth. Oh, it changed colors. Uh, what, what are we talking about? Uh, praise. Thanksgiving. Sorry, I can't get that small. It won't let me get that small. Thanksgiving, right? We think of these things belonging to faith toward God and, or his love towards us. That's where, but it actually belongs here. It belongs here. Why do we pray? For our sake and for our neighbor's sake, right? I mean, who do we pray for? Do we pray for God? No, we pray to God on behalf of ourselves and our neighbors, right? So we've been praying for Dasha all week, you know, that you have a house. How's that going? Did it fall through? Did it go through?
Oh, maybe think about thinking about him then. But when you and I saw it is under uh, yeah, I know. Are you helping, Allie? Just look. If she lies at all, so it's like, it's, she's going to use me, of course. Okay. But here's the secretary. problem. Here's the problem, right? But because because like two years ago, yeah, you could get his, you know, a three percent loan now, or maybe yeah. with your credit, maybe four percent or something, right? Not today. I can't even afford to move. Nope, nobody can. That's why there's nothing on the market because you can't afford. You're not going to sell. What's this cute house for one seventy four right where you're like four eighty? Right, exactly. Yep, yeah. yeah, Our market's doing just fine because it's. Unless you're building, I suppose. Unless you're building. All right. And then you can sell real easy. Hmm. Because, well, because material costs last year. Yeah. Not today, though. Anyway, that's neither here nor there. Right? So we pray for you. We pray to God, but for you, that God would provide. And, of course, how is he going to provide you with housing? Like, it's going to fall down from the sky and land in your lap? No, he's going to do it through others. Right, so then also that prayer is offered up publicly. Maybe somebody in the in the pew has an idea, right? And they hear your prayers, and then they answer um, out of love for you, right? But it's, is it God providing it? Yes, but He does it through others. You see, all right, uh, and that's the same thing with the offerings. Then, so the offerings go to support others. God doesn't need our offerings; He doesn't need our money, right? Um, but the congregation does, right? You know. Um, and most, most of, most of the biggest work the congregation does. So if you put a dollar in the pew, in the plate, 80 cents of it goes to the school. Mm, it means that 80%, 80% goes to the school <laughs> and there's not, we don't have 80%, 20% to do it. Right. Yeah, no, I know it does. Um, it is kind of weird putting money in the plate to support your own salary. I know just don't even think about it. Cause it's not, there's pointless. Right? And it's like, no, I'm just going to support the work of the church. And because I'm employed here, that doesn't really matter. Yeah. Um, but you put more money in the plate, then you'll get paid more. No, that's not how that works. Yeah, you see, don't think about it that way. Uh, no, it'd be, it'd be better. I mean, maybe you'll prosper in other ways. Well, of course, of course, because it's going to be used for support. You know, we have, we've had people, like, become Christian because they sent their kids to our school. Right? So that's mission work. Even though it's primarily geared for the children of the congregation, that's not actually even true. I mean, it's not even half those kids belong to this congregation. Right. All right. And not all of them are even Christian, which is another, you know, why would you send your kids to Christian school? Well, because they're not going to teach them weird stuff. Well, okay, that's true. Um, praise and thanksgiving are also for, yes, God loves to hear them, but your neighbor does too. Your neighbor does too. So this is why, like in the in the day school, you'll appreciate this because you're both in the building. Um, you know, I, I generally have to ob almost obnoxiously just get after the kids to speak up, like say it out loud. Don't just sit there and mumble and da da da. Why? Well, it does help you to like put some energy into it, right? You know, I I always say fake it like you make it or make it like what has the expression? Fake it till you make it. Fake it till you make it, right? Right? Even if you don't feel like praying, pray. Even if you don't think the money is going to be used or you don't know or whatever, just put it in. Don't worry about it. Right? Because um, God will use that. Um, same thing with uh, prayer. I mean, we're, are we always confident God's going to answer our prayer? No. Right? Well, I think he always answers every prayer. It is true. He does. Do we believe that? <laughs> well, we'd like to believe that, oh, yes. Like yeah. The the no, the notable uh, scripture for this, um, you're just you're just riffing on Saint Paul, so it's not it's not a new thought, but it's fine. It's good. I like I like how you said it too. Nothing I say is original. Trust me. Actually, I don't think anything we say is original. Uh -huh. but that's it's not. There is something about, though, actualizing. Yes, I really don't make up my own ideas. I don't make up my own sermons. Really? No. I read what, I read what uh, Jesus said, and then I, I say what Jesus said. I just read other well, stuff, like, and I recur to take what you read. Like, sure, sure. But is it my words? No. I hope not. Well, he doesn't plagiarize sermons. Sure, I do. All the time. Plagiarize? 
Yeah. yeah. I listen to I listen to pastors and preachers. Yeah. Your own thing, right? like Sometimes, you're, mostly. Interesting. Well, not always. There's no plagiarism in the church. I'm not writing sermons. I well, and I like that if you're listening to other like pastors and whatnot, mm-hmm. you're expanding your horizon. Yeah. Yeah. Just my, even just ways of talking. Yes. Right. Yeah. Uh, same thing with prayers. Like I don't make up. I make up prayers, and I also don't. The prayers that I say on Sunday are kind of a combination of ones that I've written and ones that I've gotten. I found prayer to be most helpful with the relief of anxiety. Mm-hmm. That's pretty much my... Um, I cry when I, when I pray. Yeah. That's true. <laughs> so, where, where, where were we? I like, I like where you're going with this. Oh, I was going to tell you about St. Paul. I was going to tell you about St. Paul. Uh, so St. Paul uh, says this, he prayed three times that the Lord take the thorn in his flesh from him. He doesn't tell us what it is, but there's, he's got a physical ailment, right? And then, um, and the Lord didn't, and said no, basically. He, he knows he said no because he still had it, right? And so then Paul makes this remarkable statement. He says, um, um, that, and the Lord says that my grace is sufficient for thee and my strength is made perfect in weakness. Have you heard that statement before? No. My grace, my giving, God's giving, is sufficient. So whatever he gives is enough, is what he's saying. And God makes his strength known in your weakness. <laughs> yeah, I know that's a little bit of a paradox, right? How do you get yeah. your head around that? Um, that's really a summary of the book of Job, would be an example of that. Where God keeps, allows Satan even to take more and more stuff away from Job. And ultimately, everything even his health, right? He's naked, sick, boils and sores on his flesh. His friends have all abandoned him. His house is destroyed. His kids are dead. All of his flocks and herds are gone. He was one of the wealthiest men in the ancient world. And then it was all gone, right? And then, you know, and the, what, what's the one thing that God can't take, or excuse me, that Satan can't take from him? Whatever God doesn't let him take from him. <laughs> and, that, and that's your answer. God does not allow um, Satan to either take his life or his faith. And actually, God allows Satan to take everything to test Job's faith to the point of like, like I would have broken a long time before. And it's worse than waterboarding, you know? Because <laughs> yeah. it's just months after months of just suffering and death and gloom, right? right? And his wife is just chastising him and his friends are telling him to curse God. All right. And, uh, and he, that's, it's in the context of that, like in Job 19, where he says, um, you know, his answer to all of this is, I know that my Redeemer lives, and on the last day, I will see him face to face. Like, whatever, he can take everything, but I know that there's resurrection and life for me, that's, and that's enough. Now, that's a pretty remarkable thing to say. I mean, Job's a remarkable individual that way. Uh, he has a lot to say about complaining, though. <laughs> We, 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 we like to read the good part where he's like, oh, Jesus lives, right? This is great. And he's going to raise me on the last day. Um, but we miss all the part where he's whining and complaining nonstop because of, you know, everything's gone to shit. So, yeah, and God did it to him. And he knows it, but he knows that if God did it, then there's a reason for it, right? There's purpose. And that, that's kind of a trite thing to say. This is why I'm always a little cautious about it. Well, God has a plan. People like to say that, right? God has a plan. Problem is, it's like in the moment, you don't know what it is. And you don't even really, you can't, I mean, you're just kind of trying to cling on to that for hope. But, right. but it's kind of a, it's kind of vacant because you're like, well, what does that mean? What plan? I don't know the plan. Tell me the plan, right? What's the plan? You don't know the plan. And you're like, it's like the kids asking, when are we going to get there? And you're like, oh, in, in an hour. And they're like, I don't know what an hour is. Well, it's 60 minutes. Well, what's 60 minutes? They're like, okay, never mind. Just be patient. Right. It's going gonna, it's gonna to take an hour. Don't worry about it. You know, Esther does that, right? Are we close yet? And we're like, we just left. Of course we're closer, but, but yeah. All right. So um, prayer is for, um, it isn't to make God happy with us. We already established that. It's not because God won't listen to us unless we ask or doesn't give us what we need unless we ask. Right. Um, Prayer does not, is not always answered in the way that we want, which you just established, right? But, but we do believe, not always by experience, but we, but we believe that God answers. Is that light? I think we should put a, I don't want to put a blind on a stained glass window, but sometimes it's obnoxious. That's crazy. It's so bright. It's so bright. All right. 
Uh, sorry, squirrel. That is right. The, um, but, so then why pray? pray prayer is um, for the sake of faith, so to strengthen faith, um, and also so that we don't forget um, who God is, our relationship to him, that he's a loving father who hears what we ask for, like dear children, ask their dear father, Luther will say, and also um, because our neighbor needs our prayers. Because they don't actually necessarily always believe that God is, is attentive to them and paying attention to them. Even though Jesus says, he causes the rain to fall, the sun to shine on the just and the unjust alike. Well, they think that just happens without God. But that's not what the Bible says, right? Like it wouldn't rain unless God gave us rain. Because as a matter of fact, if he doesn't want it to rain, it doesn't rain. Many times in the Bible, he causes a famine through a drought. Like, ooh, that, same God, same God. Right? Why? Because they forsake him and they refuse to listen to him. Uh, worldwide, yeah. Worldwide flood. And then he said he'd never do that again. But uh, he will do something like it again, but not with water, but with fire. Yeah. So it is a picture of the last judgment. What? You don't think of fire as a flood, but... I guess like a wildfire, right? What's that? That's why you can't breathe. That's why that everybody's got allergy problems. Also because it's humid. Didn't you see like the apocalyptic pictures of New York where they had where the cloud cover the smoke cover was so dense that it looked like you were in some kind of like end of the world? No, you couldn't go outside because you couldn't breathe. It was a hundred times toxic level. Because then it would be like living in an action movie. Escape from New York. All right. Dasha needs some catechesis on prayer, even if Allie doesn't. Hi, Joan. Yes, I do. Good. All right. So, um, Lord's Prayer. In the, in the medieval period, I didn't talk about this last time, so it's worth pointing out, is that up until the Reformation, most people taught the Lord's Prayer as having three parts, m mirroring the, what? The creed, right? Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Yeah. And there, there is some truth to that, is that you've got our Father at the beginning, right? And then you have forgiveness in the middle, which comes by way of Jesus' suffering and death, Right. And then you also have the kingdom and the power and the glory coming, which is the work of the Spirit. Was added. Everybody... Correct, because it was added. Oh, when... mm, the, I don't think the evidence is entirely clear, but third, fourth century. What was added? Was it just the, the last sentence? Was I just the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever? Because... Oh. This part. He, it ends with, deliver us from the evil one. Amen. Okay. In all the Gospels. Okay, I know that, like, going to Mass with mm -hmm. my super cat family, that's where it would always end. Right, yeah. So, um, but also in super Catholic churches at the time of the Reformation and before, uh, this part was the part that the priest said. So this was the priest, and then this was the people. And we still do that. In the fall, we'll do that with um, Divine Service Setting 3. Oh, we're, we're in Setting 1 all summer. We were in Setting 4, uh -huh. but in the fall, we'll go to 3, which is... There's four settings? There's five, five. In, in Lutheran Service Book. There's more than that, but there's five in Lutheran Are Service Book. In the hymnal? In the hymnal. Lutheran Service Book, the hymnal. Yep. Service 3 is the oldest. Mm, yes. Um, it's what's sometimes called the common service, but it does this. So I'll sing, Our Father who art in heaven. We, I chant it, and then the congregation responds, For thine is the kingdom and the power. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where it comes from. Yeah. All right. But anyway, three parts. That's how it used to be. Father, kingdom, heaven and earth. And then son, forgiveness of sins, temptation, and then deliverance from evil and the kingdom, power, glory etc. is from God the Holy Spirit. But that's not how we do it. Alright, so we would say, this is, this is the introduction. 
This is the first petition. This is the second petition. This is the third. No, no. This is the third. Oops. How do I erase? Oh, no. Okay. I have to remember. I used this over in school, but I haven't used it here. This is the fourth petition. How many days did you get? No, just for this room. And this is the fifth petition here. How is the and then for the chapel? sixth, no. and then the seventh. We have one for the chapel room. What? We have two of these boards. No, we have one in every classroom. Isn't there one over? Oh, we have one in every classroom. Right. Oh, well, these are the same ones that's. Okay. I didn't know how what those giant screens were. Isn't there still one in the other two storage for the chapel? Correct. Which was going to be a classroom at some point. All right. So seven petitions. Seven's a good number. Seven. Give me oh, some seven. Yeah, seven's great. Seven. Why? Seven. What is seven in the Bible? It's a holy number. Why is it a holy number? Well, God. Does everything seven? Does he? No, he does things in threes, threes and fours and twelves. There's twelves. Twelve apostles. Seven days a week. Good. Yeah. And it. What, what did he say at the end of the seven days? Rest. Mm -hmm. days. And he said it is. Very good. Yeah, and he made that day holy, too. Mm -hmm. right. So generally, we say seven is the number of completion. Oh, that's right. Yeah, or perfection, if you like. But I don't use perfection because that's Aristotle, and we're not Aristotelian. No, no, I wouldn't say that. We're just not Aristotelian. Thanks. All right, so seven petitions. Um, and what is a petition? A petition is something we ask for. Ask for. All right. Now, the Lord's Prayer is unique. Um, one, because God gave it, right? So, to his apostles, to his disciples. I know, this is, all, don't laugh, this is good. This is, I want you to ask these questions. Thank you. Sermon, you know the Sermon on the Mount? All right. So when you pray, don't be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray, standing in the synagogues in the corners that they may be seen. Hey, look at us praying. You know, you know how people are. This is like, it's all. Well, no, it's that's that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about like let like let's all get together around the flagpole and pray for our country in the public square, right? And so everybody can see. We'll make sure we call up the newspaper so they can get photos. Yeah, there's, well, it's that too. Therefore, do not be like them, for your father knows the things that they have need of before you ask him. All right? So don't be like them making a big deal. In this manner, therefore, pray. All right? Now you say. Now notice, this is New King James. They do put the longer ending on here, but they give you a little note. Oh, they changed it. They give you a little note. The Nesli Oland, which is a form of, it's from the Greek, omits the rest. Okay. So some manuscripts have it, some don't. That's why we think it's pretty early. Uh, but look at this. I'm going to go to show you it in Luke, because Luke's different. Now it came to pass, as he was praying in a certain place, when he ceased, when he stopped, that one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray, as John, that's John the Baptist, also taught his disciples. All right. So John had, had apostles or disciples, I should say. Uh, when John was put into prison, he sent his disciples to Jesus to follow him. Because John's like, I must decrease, Jesus must increase. Now that Jesus is here, don't follow me, follow him. Right? Well, he's in jail. That and he's also in jail, yes. He can't really be a public figure anymore. Uh, no, you can actually run for president from jail. They're, they're, in real life? Yeah, the, the Constitution he's doesn't... You can be a felon and run for president. You, don't, you can have felonies, you can have... You can have done jail time. No, there's nothing to prohibit you. Being indicted doesn't make you unfit for office, according to the Constitution. Just according to us, <laughs> we think. It's like, no, I... They're all criminals. Just not everybody's been indicted or jailed or in prison for it, right? You're criminals too. Three felonies a day, according to uh, lawyers. All right, anyway. Um, teach us to pray. So they asked Jesus... We need word. We don't know how to do this, right? Now, they had lots of prayers in the Old Testament. So they, 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 and the Psalms are prayers. They're also hymns. They're also God's word. But, so he had, they had prayers, but um, Jesus does something remarkable then because he just, he says, okay, when you pray, here it is. This is very similar to when the, the person asked Jesus, um, what's the greatest commandment? 
Now, I mean, it's kind of a trick question because they're all good, right? I mean, they're all true. If God commanded, then it's a command. Then, don't murder. Right, exactly. So which one, right? Oh, is it adultery or is it murder? That's what they wanted. And Jesus says, no. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, strength, and mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. That's the greatest. And there, there's two commandments, but it's really one. And that's it. And you're like, well, wait a minute. What about mur- murders in that? Right, so you can summarize it. You can summarize all the commandments into just that simple statement. Love God and love your neighbor as yourself. Hmm? How come that one doesn't have who art? Ah, yes. Uh, it's because it's just a, tra- it's a translation. Who art? We, we keep saying who art from, New King, uh, from the King James because if we change the way we say the Lord's Prayer, guess what happens? There's going to be a riot. Yes. No, we can't have a riot. So we just don't change the words even though it's old, old English. People do this with Psalm 23. Everybody learns Psalm 23 from the King James. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down. You know, they, you, you don't say makes me lie down. Except for when they pray the Lord's Prayer or when they say the 23rd Psalm. version of this? This is New King James. New King James. Oh, so it's King James and New King James. It's just made a little bit more modern English. There's the ESV. Mm-hmm. Yeah, different translations. They're all from, I mean, if you really... If you would prefer, oh, there's King James, and then down before, below you can see it in, uh, in Greek. All right, so this is, this is original. Do you have a Bible app? Well, yeah, what do you think I'm doing? I don't know. <laughs> All right, where were we? There it is. All right, so teach us to pray. And then he gives them a prayer, and I would suggest to you, I don't think we said this before, is that this prayer summarizes everything that God has promised. It's all there. So it's the perfect prayer. Well, of course it is. God gave it to us. But, you know, if you don't know what to pray for, pray the Lord's Prayer. Right? And anything that you need, you ask for in the prayer. Everything that you need for faith, everything you need to believe, you also ask for here in the prayer. In one prayer with seven petitions. Seven things that you ask for. Do you say the Lord's Prayer every, like, every, every service? Every service? Yes. Yes, and in the morning and at night. Luther even says in the catechism to pray it at mealtimes. Yeah. yeah. And you say, well, that's kind of like, oh, you're just saying the same thing and you don't mean it. Well, it doesn't matter because it's God's word. Now, because it's God's word, how does God give faith? By his word. By his word into your ears, that's right. Now, if you just pray the prayer by yourself, does it work? Sure, it does. Sure. It's still God's word. It's still on your lips. Um, but there is something about praying it with others out loud. Because then you, you're, you're right, you hear it into your ear. Right? And it encourages one another in faith, too. Not just your faith, but for their faith, too. This is why I was saying way, a while ago, this is why I try to get the kids to just speak up. Whether it's we're saying a prayer, or we're, we're singing a psalm, or we're singing a hymn, or we're doing responses, whatever it is. Just God as father until his son came. To call him father means he has a, he has a child, and in particular a son, so Jesus. They didn't have identity as children of God. Um, they no, they would call themselves children of Abraham more. Okay. Right. Yeah. Maybe that has a. It's profound. Maybe profound that effect. Has a, something to do with the narcissists. Oh, you're reading the book, yeah. <laughs> Well, they, they mean children of the earth, you know, or children of the corn or something, right? Right. 
our, so who's praying the prayer? Everyone. This is plural, right? Yeah. Third person plural. So our together. This, this, this is, suggests, it's the same in Matthew, that the prayer was given to be prayed publicly with Christians, other Christians. No, it doesn't mean you can't pray it alone, but because you're saying our, yours, mine, everybody, right? Here. Um, everybody who's a child of God. How are we made a child of God, by the way? By being baptized into Jesus, who is the Son of God. And because we're baptized and then, uh, or adopted as sons in Jesus, sons and daughters, if you prefer, then that makes us a child too. But we're not children of God by creation. This is what sometimes people get confused about this. Like, well, everybody's a child of God because God made them. No, that just means you're a creature. God's your creator. But to call him father means you have to be his child. Well, how are you going to be made his child? Through faith. By baptism. All right. Through faith and baptism? Well, faith is given in baptism, yes. Okay. What is it? Baptism is, as, as the apostle says, the washing of rebirth and renewal by the Holy Spirit. Or as Jesus says to Nicodemus, you must be born again by water and the word to be called a child of God. That's what he says. So, John 3. We talked about that last week. Hmm. No, it's just, I'm just undermining things that you've been told your whole well, life. Well, we've we got to start somewhere. And that's not confusing at all. No, it, confusing at all. it doesn't say that you're saved by anything other than faith. People say that it says that you're saved by other things other than faith in Jesus. But that's not what it says. But like, so so all, all we're noticing here, it's only confusing because you have confusing ideas that I'm undermining. Yes, go ahead. And you accept Jesus into your heart. You don't. You don't. No. No, that was third article of the creed. No. Jesus said, no one comes to the Father except through me. There's no way... No way to, the, to God the Father, no way to love the Son apart from Him choosing you. That's the sermon today, by the way. It's, by the, it's the sermon today. You're a lost sheep. You wandered off. Well, how are you? You're going to go and find Jesus? <laughs> I, oh, I accept Jesus into my heart. Uh, no, the sheep doesn't. It keeps wandering. That's why Jesus tells the parable. You think you came to me. No, I came to you. <laughs> so it's like... So I'm undermining the way a lot of people, even Christians, talk in contradiction to the scripture, was my suggestion. All right, anyway, let's keep going. Hallowed be your name. So to keep God's name holy means to only use it the way that he wants us to use it. It does mean to use it. We use his name, but we use it the way he told us to. So that's what hallowed means? Mm -hmm. Keep it holy. Yeah, again, it's just old English. It just means holy. So to keep his name holy. All right. Your kingdom come. Not my kingdom, not the kingdoms of the world, but your kingdom. How does God's kingdom come? Well, you have to read the catechism for that. Your will be done. Not my will, your will, right? Yeah. On earth as it is in heaven. So to bring heaven to earth, how does he do that? There's a lot here, right? Okay. Uh, daily bread, everybody loves that one. Uh, but daily bread is everything needed for body and life. So house is included in daily bread. Mm-hmm. Uh, forgive us our sins. In Matthew, it was trespasses, I think. But that's fine. Either way. For we also forgive everyone who is indebted to us. Now, that's interesting, right? I don't like, I don't like the new... I don't like this wordage. This is correct. <laughs> uh, the, two, the two, Matthew and Luke, tell... They're, they're different. But they mean the same thing. They just use different words. It's, it's, you think of things very narrowly. You need to think of things a little bit more broadly. Sin is a debt that we owe to God. Sin is also going against God's word. It's both. Right? Can we pay the debt we owe to God? No. No. Do we do what God has said? No. It's the same. It's the same way of speaking. Right? When our neighbor sins against us, right, that they owe us something. Right? You know, this is how the whole world, world works. Right? Well, you, you offended me. Now show that you, you know, that you're sorry. Right? Isn't that what you do in your relationships? Right? Your husband sins against you. You're like, say you're sorry and you know, make me dinner or something. And take, no, move on. That's different. That's closer to forgiveness. That's closer to forgiveness. No, that's not how most people work. It's like it's tit for tat, right? You got to do, 
quid, quid pro quo. You do this for me, I'll do that for you. You sin against me, then you've got to do something good to make up for it, right? Always making amends. <laughs> That's how the whole world works. That's not how you work because you're Christians. See? Because you're like, uh, that's no way to go through life. I'm just going to have to forgive. Yeah, that is way too stressful. Way too stressful. I'm gonna just need, I just need to forgive people when they sin against me. And, uh, and then maybe they'll learn to forgive me too. They usually don't say sorry. They usually don't say sorry. No. By the way, forgiveness is connected back to this one. Holy, hallowing his name. Because forgive in the name of Jesus. Use his name that way. Don't just say, I forgive you. Say, I forgive you in the name of Jesus. That's a conversation starter, by the way. <laughs> like, wait a minute. Why are you saying in the name? I'd much rather stick with my peace be with you. Yeah. It's almost like fighting words. You're like, in the name of Jesus, I forgive you. So, yeah. You're like, don't feel that. And then to the point that we made about Job, don't lead us into temptation. The temptations come, but we pray that God would deliver us from them, like he did for Job. That God allowed the temptation to afflict him. He, Satan asked and he said, go ahead. And then, but he delivered Job at the end. By the way, the, the punchline is the end of Job is everything gets better. So, but it, it's rough going because it's 40 some chapters of just terrible. Okay, like how long do you think that whole period lasted? Is, is there time? Mm, months or years, I think. No, they don't give time. Years, right? Yeah. Like, it seems that way. Yeah, at the beginning. The house falls on him. His wife leaves him. Wife leaves him. Yeah. She she just kind of shows up every once in a while and gives him a hard time. Yeah, she's like, this is your problem. All right, so you know it this way. And deliver us from evil. But you'll notice what, what we have here in the translation from Luke. Deliver us from the evil one. Right, so evil is man. Of, it, it's not just an abstract idea. Evil is is to go against God's word. That's evil, right? Um, to be tempted, to be tried, to, have, to suffer in this world. That's evil. This world is an ev- evil place, even though it's beautiful sometimes. Um, it's still, you know. And then, of course, the devil is the evil one. And we want to be delivered from all of that, from our own sin, from this, from the temptations of this world, and from the devil himself, and his lies and, temp- and trials and whatever. Right, so it is a lot. So what we're asked for in the, you see, when we the prayer, what we ask for, it's comprehensive. It's everything that we need for both body and for and life and for eternity. Yeah, like that's comprehensive. Correct. It's like the, right. It's that doesn't mean this is the. It doesn't mean it's the only prayer we pray, um, but it is a prayer that we pray <laughs> a lot. So that's that.